Hi, I'm Rita. This short film will show you about 21st century prospecting in Victoria. It'll show you what we do, how we do it, and you'll meet some people along the way. So please sit back, relax and enjoy. It's hard to describe what drives people to look for gold. Everyone dreams of finding a large nugget of gold and you'll never ever wreck that dream. When, when you find a take, you get a bit of an adrenaline, adrenaline rush. Run the detector over again, it was getting very loud. You think now, is it a little one, uh, a big one, or is it just a piece of junk? I thought, this is a, this is a 50 ounce for sure. Even the smallest piece, it's, it's very um, satisfying. And two hours later, we come up with that. Now, isn't that a great thing? 876 ounces of beauty. I've been prospecting about five or six years now. I've been all through, well, a lot of New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia, West Australia, and Victoria, of course. Over the years, I reckon I've found about four or five, six pieces that uh, doesn't amount to much, maybe $60 on the day's value, but uh, it's just the, the thrill of the, uh, the find, really, whether it's big, small, or otherwise. The Seekers Club is a gold prospecting club where I come here with my husband and spend a lot of time in a bush enjoying the bird life and the wildlife. Seekers Club is a club we started uh, about 31 years ago and uh, we are 200 members. The idea is to come and find some gold of course but to enjoy the countryside and the, the bush life. In Victoria, the prospector will need a miner's right, which gives the holder the right to prospect for gold and minerals in Victoria, uh, whether they use a metal detector or a gold pan. The regulations as far as prospecting is concerned is uh, basically no mechanical means are to be used uh, on, on the miner's right. The holder of a miner's right is required to refill the hole, not remove or damage shrubs or trees and to leave the area how they found it. There is a, a, a code of ethics that the Prospectors and Miners Association have. Uh, one of the main ones is to take your rubbish with you, backfill all your holes uh, and uh, take all, all the junk you find, take with you and uh, dispose of it properly. Uh, in other words, just leave the environment the way you find it. When you jump the club, you get the, the, the books of wood and that outline how they behave, they have to behave when they come to the bush. We got an etiquette in our club and we all stick to the etiquette. We all have our portable toilet, our own electricity. We take home all our rubbish. We make sure when you leave the place, we leave the place, it's all nice, clean and tidy. You won't know we've been there. We want to respect the bush and we want to be allowed to come back. I would say that most, 99% of prospectors go out there and they certainly don't damage the books. They don't, they don't drive their cars over trees and things like that. They just go and park in the, uh, somewhere off the track and, and, and go and do their detecting. If they camp out in the bush, you wouldn't know they've been there after a day or two. So I don't see that we have any impact on the bush whatsoever. We do find everything you can think of. Of course, unfortunately, a lot of lead. When I find a bit of junk, uh, whether it's a button, a tack, or a piece of steel, or whatever, put it in my pocket. And uh, I've got a, uh, a jar in the car that I put all the rubbish in and uh, take it home and dispose of it. If you find lead in the bush, as in detecting, uh, you have to make sure you take it with you because uh, when you come back next month, you won't find it again. It's very frustrating to find the same piece of bullet all the time. It is cleaning the bush, really, cleaning the bush from rubbish. Your town's like Denali. Tarnagulla, Maligal, uh, Inglewood, Wedderburn all rely on gold prospectors. Uh, gold prospectors spend the money on fuel, food, um, at motels, caravan parks. It is essential income for all these small towns. They rely on the gold prospectors. This area in central Victoria has the largest series of nuggets that have ever been found in recorded history anyway. Uh, 
Um, so it's always this dream of finding a large nugget that gets, that gets people to this particular part of Victoria. Because all the small towns like Maribara are based from gold uh, and they sit all on very rich leads, without um, prospectors looking for gold, some of those towns would, would be almost ghost towns today. Well, the local communities, they, um, they're not uh, booming by any means. Without the prospectors, they'd be uh, probably in dire straits. The tourist dollar is very important to this town. I manage a, a restaurant, cafe, uh, in Denali on the gold fields. Fifty years ago, this would have been thriving, definitely, with the gold fields and, and all the people coming here for that. It's extremely important for the tourist dollar to be spent in this town. Extremely important. If you're spending a weekend or so, you, you may well probably buy fuel, you may buy some drinks in the local towns, try and support them, or you may stay in the caravan park there. But uh, we try and support the local communities where we can. We've been in the park for 16 years this year. By far the biggest single group who come here through autumn, winter, spring are related to the prospecting game in some way or another. It really is quite a large thing for us. The social side for me is very important because I like mixing with people. The majority of the prospectors are retired people who want to enjoy the outdoors um, and maybe find a little bit of gold. It's not a strenuous exercise by any means, but, but you walk around, it's, it's exercise. It's out in the open and fresh air and that, and uh, it's good for you. I think. Getting out and having a hunt for gold is, is uh, certainly a, a, a very good uh, uh, sedate, if you like, reasonable occupation for a person of my age, and I'm 70. It's great, it keeps us active, it keeps us moving, and uh, I think that uh, for any, anyone who's retired even, or not retired, it's, it's certainly a great hobby to, uh, to carry on with. Because you do get rewards, you get rewards of the physical exercise, you get rewards from sometimes you find a, a, a nugget, and that, that's a big thrill, keeps the old ticker going. No, you don't go and think of you making a, a fortune. No, it's just the fun of it. I, I just do it as a hobby. But, um, other than other hobbies I have, I like to go prospecting, get out in the bush. I can't see myself giving it away because if I go on a holiday, I'm not going to sit around and read a book. I'd like to get out and do a bit. I had a very good friend who was 80, 82 or something and he was still going out enjoying it. Loved it. Absolute. His wife used to say to him, what happens? What happens if you die out there? Well, if I die, I'm dead, that's it. I've enjoyed myself. And that's what he said to her, exactly what he said. And why not? Going to the club, yes, it made me a millionaire. A millionaire in happiness and health. But of course, otherwise in money, forget about it. It's just good fun. That was vastly different to the 1850s, wasn't it? Now, if your role involves making decisions on land use in relation to prospecting, can I ask that you remember what you've seen today and the people that you've met? And if you've got any questions at all, or indeed you've been bitten by the gold bug, please do get in touch. Thanks for watching. Cheers.